Last autumn, <clears throat> about this time, I got an email from the Dunk Greens telling me that they thought I very much needed to see, before it closed, the Crows Theater's production of Shakespeare's As You Like It. Now, I hadn't at that point been inside a theater since the pandemic started, and though I had read all of Shakespeare's major plays when I was in a Brit Lit course in high school, I didn't recall actually liking As You Like It. Still, I am a sucker for a hot tip when it comes to theater, so I convinced Bob and a couple of our friends to attend. Two nights later, we got to the theater, we donned our masks, had our tickets scanned, showed our proof of vaccination, took our seats, and waited for the play to begin. At the appointed hour, a young man emerged from the heavy red curtains at the front of the stage, much like these. He introduced himself as Cliff Cardinal, and then explained that he would like, on behalf of the theater, to offer a land acknowledgement. He named his own indigenous identity and then started naming the many indigenous peoples who have given shape to Toronto across ten, some 10 millennia, thanking them for their contributions and their ongoing stewardship of these lands. He continued recounting that history in more detail. At the four or five minute mark, it started to become clear that this was going to be a particularly fulsome land acknowledgement. In the past, some of the most powerful land acknowledgements I have heard have come from indigenous people themselves. They've often been offered almost like a great prayer of thanksgiving, a naming of deep gratitude for not only the people who are caretakers of the land, but also to the creator for the gift of the world with all of its abundance, with all of its many blessings that sustain our lives in ways we seldom see. Cliff Cardinal invoked many of these images as he continued speaking. At the 15 minute mark, I don't think I was alone in the audience in thinking that this was going to be a late night. What with the lengthy land acknowledgement followed by a five act play complete with intermission. At some point though, in the moments that followed, Cliff Cardinal conceded that none of us would actually be seeing any Shakespeare that evening. It was apparent by the time he said it, but it was nonetheless helpful to hear, as each person there had to accept that their evening was going in a decidedly unexpected direction. Cardinal pressed on. And he challenged the audience over the hollowness of so much of what passes as settler land acknowledgments these days. References to peoples and histories we scarcely know. Allusions to injustice without any accountability. Promises of action absent real change to back them up. At one point, he plainly stated the rub at the heart of all of this. The fact that no number of land acknowledgments is ever going to result in settlers simply giving back the land. He played the line for laughs, and we all dutifully chuckled because every one of us knew it to be undeniably true. None of us was going anywhere that night or any night. We are all too far in. Besides, you can't just simply erase or reverse five complicated centuries. And so here we all are with the inconvenient truths that what we have proudly called our home has a history that can be hard to bear, hard to accept, hard to acknowledge. My main takeaway from that unforgettable night of theater, <clears throat> a point echoed again and again by indigenous voices, much like in the film we just watched, is that we who are settlers here are being asked to fully acknowledge the injustices of the past and the present, to accept some real accountability for the legacies of harm that echo today, and to take some meaningful action to right the wrongs of racism and genocide. At the heart of this, what I hear is a call, an invitation to share a common reality. Without genuine acknowledgement, there is no hope of reconciliation. Without squarely facing the truth, there is no prospect of justice or peace. Without confronting the reality of lasting harm, there is no hope of healing. Thinking about my own life, I am grateful to be a person who finds it relatively easy to forgive and forget. An apology, however brief, will, if heartfelt, go a very long way with me. 
but the absence of an apology tends to gnaw at me. I sometimes strive to be the bigger person and to let bygones be bygones, and sometimes I succeed. But the reason that some hurts tend to stay with me is because I feel that the other person and I are no longer living in a shared reality. Something has happened, something was done, and without that harm being acknowledged, it's hard to pretend that everything is fine or normal, because it's not. So the question the film put to us is one we must face. What are we acknowledging when we acknowledge this land? What are we recognizing? And what are we in response called to do? In various ways, indigenous peoples have made clear that wallowing in guilt isn't actually very helpful. Often it just means it becomes more about us than them and the harm that needs to be addressed. What they are asking for from our acknowledgments is that we take in their truths, that we come to understand, and that we take action to help find a path to healing, to building up a better world for us all. So echoing the film here is what I would like for us to acknowledge today. We acknowledge that this city, this province, and this country have been built on the traditional lands of countless indigenous nations, the original inhabitants and caretakers of this land, and that their contributions will not and cannot be forgotten. We acknowledge their resilience and continued presence on this land, and that they have weathered attempts to erase their past through colonization that their people's traditions, cultures, and languages have and will continue to shape the history of this country. And we acknowledge that these stories are our collective past and that we all have a role to play in ensuring future generations have access to our true history. May it be so. May we learn, understand, and come to act that healing may at last take root and open before us a future in which all may flourish. That's how I would like it. That's how I hope we would all like it. Amen. <laughs>